Good morning, everybody. How's everybody dealing with the heat, all right? You know, I believe that uh, hot days like this create a lot of Christians. Because once they see how hot it is, they don't want to go to a place like that. So they want to become a Christian. Well, it's nice and cool in here for us. So we can worship God in a little bit uh, not so hot a place. How about if we bow our heads for prayer before we start? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for... As always, that we have, uh, we can come here, worship you, give you thanks, listen to your word. We thank you for this uh, nice, cool place we have to come to. Show us, keep our hearts uh, and our minds open to what it is, what kind of people you want us to be, the way you want us to live our lives. And but most of all, we come here to praise you and thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Please rise for the first song.
We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. O oh God, your ears are always open to the prayers of your servants. Open our hearts and minds to you, so that we may live in harmony with your will, and receive the gifts of your Spirit. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is from Genesis chapter 18. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is so is as bad as the outcry that has been reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill righteous along with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, we will, not the, will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, I will find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom. I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Now what if I have been as so bold to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes? What if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? We will destroy the whole city for the lack of five people. If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only 40 are found there? He said, For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if 30 there. Abraham said, Now what if I have been so bold to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry and let me speak just one more. What if only 10 people can be found there? He answered, for the, sen pe for ten pe for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left. And Abraham returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. The epistle lesson is from Colossians 2, starting at the sixth verse. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sin and in uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, 
having canceled the charge, the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive any, everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. When Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And supposing the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the sermon. Oh, 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 oh. 
Good morning again, everyone. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, I titled this one, Bargaining with God, because uh, that's kind of what happens in the Old Testament lesson when uh, Abraham is bargaining with God. The interesting thing about what's happening is God, uh, Abraham is meeting face to face with God. Now you remember last week we talked about uh, where he was, where he, these three men came to him, and I think they're where they're. What the Bible's trying to show us is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are showing up to talk to Abraham. Imagine having that kind of a close relationship with God where you can talk to him, you can bargain with him. You have a closeness, you can see him. I know we all feel that we can talk to God anytime we want, but I, can you imagine having that kind of a closeness to God where you can actually talk to him and even bargain with him? Um, I don't know, has anybody ever here ever uh, talked to God where they heard God talking to him, to them, to, to you? <laughs> Has he ever talked to you? I know I have a lot of times I feel God is telling me something, but I don't necessarily hear his voice. As a matter of fact, most of the time when I spend praying, I'm talking to him. I'm telling him what I want and what I need and what I would like. I'm not always kind of listening for God to speak that voice. Maybe we should be a little more in that type of attitude when we pray. One of the things came to my mind, Peggy was listening to a story, my wife was listening to a story on her phone the other day about a pastor, and the pastor was talking and he was saying about God specifically speaking to him. He had a daughter and a son, and he had a son and a daughter-in-law, and uh, the son and daughter-in-law had two children already, but she had had a two miscarriages after that. And, uh, they wanted to have another child. They had two girls and they wanted to try to have a boy and so they were in that process. And God came to him, so they were going to a doctor to try to get help as to how they could go best about having another child. And uh, the pastor says that God came to him and said to him uh, that she was pregnant. She was going to be pregnant or she was pregnant. At the time that God spoke to him, he said, she's pregnant. So he told his daughter-in-law, she's pregnant. You're pregnant. And she said, no, no. She said, I just went to the doctor the other day, and the doctor said, I'm not pregnant. And he said, well, God told me you're pregnant. And she said, well, you know, I don't think so. So a few weeks later, weeks go by, and she has another appointment with this doctor again. And she goes to the doctor again the second time, and when she goes to the doctor again, because they're going to talk about whatever methods they're going to use to try to get her pregnant, the doctor comes out after the test and everything, and he says to her, guess what? You're pregnant. And as a matter of fact, based on what I think, you were pregnant when you were here last time. God spoke to that pastor the day before she went to the doctor the first time. So, God told that pastor that his daughter-in-law was pregnant, and he kept telling them that he was pregnant. So this was a time when he said God specifically spoke to him and told him something specific, and he actually spoke to him. He said he heard God say this to, to him. So God does talk to us. Some of, sometimes he does talk to us specifically and tells us things that he wants us to know. Wow, that's really great. I love to have God talking to me. A lot of times I know when we pray for things and you're praying for a direction in things, I always try to add in the words in my prayer and say, and make it so specific, <laughs> make it happen in such a way that whatever decision you want us to make or whatever you want us to do or me to do, I can't miss it. Because a lot of times I miss a lot of things that God is directing me, I think, to do. So I always say to him, and make it in a way, if you're not going to tell me it, make it in a way that it's easy for me to understand. Well, the Old Testament lesson today is about Abraham speaking to God. And if you know from last week, that portion of it talked about God being there the three men, God, 
being there and telling Abraham that his wife Sarah was going to have a baby and we're going to come back in a year, or he actually says, I will come back in a year and you will have a child. So he's already said that before. So now we're at the point where they're walking away uh, to, to leave. And Abraham follows them uh, as they begin to walk away. And they say something, or God says something about, he says, as they walk away, in the lesson today, God says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? He's got to be talking to his son and the Holy Spirit, the three of them, that's who he's talking to. But he says, should I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Kind of interesting, isn't it? So Abraham kind of says, I guess, he says, well, what are you about to do? And he says, well, I'm going down because I've, I've had this outcry, this outcry about Sodom and Gomorrah, what horrible, horrible places they are, places of huge amount of sexual immorality taking place in these cities. And I've had this outcry to do something about it. So where did this outcry come from? We don't know. It doesn't say specifically, but if, if you look for some of the footnotes on about these things, it says that he's talking about like the outcry of when Cain killed Abel. He says that Abel's blood cried out to him. So he's talking about something like that, so he knows this is going on and he's heading down there. Well, why was it important for Abraham to get in his face, so to speak, and to start bargaining with him? Because his nephew Lot and his wife and his two children lived in Sodom. Now, the interesting thing to me is, if these cities were so bad, what was a godly man like Lot and his wife and his two daughters doing living in Sodom? Why didn't they get out of there? I don't know. But anyhow, Abraham knows that they're there. And that's when Abraham starts this bargaining with God. Well, if you find 50 people down there, will you still save the city? Would you kill them? Would you kill all the good people with the bad people? And then God says, if I find 50, and then it's 45 and 40 and 30 and 20, and it gets down to 10. And the only thing I criticize Abraham here about is, why did he stop at 10? Why didn't he just say, if you find one? <laughs> but he didn't. He stopped at 10, and God said 10. I think, personally, God knew there weren't 10 people there. He knew there were four people there. There was Lot, his wife, and his two kids. That's what he knew was there, so he's going to destroy them. He's just, I think, being nice to Abraham. He's letting him interact with him about this situation, because he knows Abraham cares. After all, his people after that are all come from Abraham. So, he says, yeah, if there's ten, but there weren't ten. And then we know how the story goes, that if we read it, two angels show up down there and they go to Lot and his wife and they say, God's going to destroy the city. We need to take you out of here. If you have any, they even say to them, the two angels even say to them, if you have any relatives or friends or people, get them bring them out. And they go to, the, there's a couple of people that I guess that are going to marry his daughters, and he goes to them, Lot, and says this is going to happen, and they laugh at him. So who ultimately comes out with the angels is Lot, his wife, and his two children, and then, of course, we know the story. He said, don't look back, and his wife looks back. She turns into a pillar of salt. But the point of, I'm getting at is not that part so much as the fact that God, that Abraham was able to speak to God, was even able to bargain with God. I think that's the kind of relationship God wants us to have with him. He wants us to feel that way about him. Not that we're always bargaining with him. I mean, how many have you ever said, look, God, if you just do this, you know, I'll make sure I don't miss sun church for a year, you know, whatever. But I think it's not really something more like that. It's more of that close relationship of having that with God, that feeling when you're speaking to God, when you're praying to God, that you do have that relationship, that he's listening to you, that he he's, uh, understands what you 
what you want and what he can do for you because you're one of his chosen people. So then we go on to the gospel lesson where we're talking about prayer, we're talking about talking to God. So in the gospel lesson, Jesus' disciples, what do they do? They say to him, teach us to pray. They see Jesus praying all the time. Jesus is talking to his father constantly. So they see him praying all the time and they want to know what is, what is he saying? What, what's going on there? Teach us to pray. We want to be like you. So he gives them what we call the Lord's Prayer. So he gives them a little bit of a guide. It's very short. It's not a lot of information there, but he gives them kind of a guide. And he starts off, and I know I try to start off when I pray, he starts off with, you know, uh, hallowed be thy name. In other words, what he's talking about is praising his Father. Think about that when you pray. This is the God that created the universe. When I pray, I think that I say to God all the time, I can't believe you picked me <laughs> to be one of, out of the billions of people who have lived and will live you had time to pick me to make me one of your children. That's amazing to me, and I have to praise him for it. As a matter of fact, when we use terms, you know, the holy of holies and this and this, one of the terms we use is king of kings. We don't have a king. We have a president in this guy. We have a whole different kind of thing. We're not used to this king idea. But God is the king of kings, the God of gods, the everything. And we need to let God know that we know that. We need to say that to him all the time. And then what's the next thing we need to do is we need to say, forgive us for our sins. What do we do here in church before we take communion? We always ask for forgiveness for our sins. And then Jesus, interestingly, in the way he put it, he said to pray, forgive me of my sins the way I forgive others the way I forgive others. That's really a critical thing. Do, you, uh, do we forgive others? Do we hold grudges against other people? Do we forgive other people for doing that? God forgave us. God forgives us. So Jesus put that part in there. It was interesting where he said that. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins the way we forgive others or as we forgive others. We need to think about that when we pray that. We pray the Lord's Prayer so casually over and over and over again. We need to think of the words. And then he says, lead us not into temptation. Doesn't mean God would tempt us necessarily, but it's just saying, don't let us get off the track. Don't let us get into a place where the evil one can get a hold of us, where the evil one could get a piece of us. Because Satan is certainly out there in our world today trying very, very hard to get a piece of all of us. There's no question about that. So, that's what God said. And then Jesus went on to say, to tell a story about persistency in prayer. About how to pray. That's what this story is about. One of my favorite stories, I know you've heard me say this a number of times, my favorite stories is the one about the judge and the woman who keeps after the judge over and over and over again. And Jesus uses that parable as an example and he says, finally the judge gives in to the woman and says, we got to get her off my back. So I'm going to get her what she wants. And he's basically saying that's the kind of persistency you need to have with God. You need to be fearless about it. And he uses the term in here of the man knocking at the door. And these are Jesus' words right out of the Bible. It says, because of your shameless audacity, shameless audacity, the guy will give you the bread. And he's talking about using shameless audacity when you approach God in your prayer requests and the things that you're talking to God about. Don't be afraid. He says, God can handle it. <laughs> God can handle you being persistent all the time in what you're praying for. We all know that God answers all prayer, but sometimes he says, yes, no, maybe. Remember I said one time, I can, I can do, answer your prayer, but I can't answer your prayer because it's that it'll affect her prayer. So 
there's a lot of different things that go on in prayers, but we know God hears and answers our prayers, whether they're the way we always want them to be answered or not, is a different story. So, he's talking about praying to God, he's talking about persistency with your prayers to God. He says, and then he goes on to say after that, he says that he's talking about prayers to God, he says that seek, ask, seek, and knock. That's where he's talking about. Ask, seek, and knock. He's saying, ask. Don't be afraid to ask God. We should never be afraid to ask God. All right? And we should never be afraid to believe that God can't answer a prayer. He can do anything. If he can create the universe, he can certainly do anything. So we should never be afraid to ask God in our prayers for help for ourselves, for someone else, for whatever. And then he said, seek, all right? He said, seek, where do we seek? As a matter of fact, let's go back to the Lord's Prayer. He said, give us, you say, give us this each day our daily bread. He's not just talking about food. What does he say to, this, to Satan when he's in there? He says, God, a man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what he's talking about there too. He may be talking about food, but he's certainly talking about where do you get the word? Just sitting there today, you're listening to the word. You're trying to absorb that word, but we need to spend more time in the word so that we understand all of those things. We understand what does God want from us? How do we, how do we, should we live our lives? Well, anyway, that was back to, the, to that. But he says, seek. So where do you seek? You seek in the word of God. You try to find out things about God and about what he says and what he wants, and, and how he wants us to be. All right, and he says, seek and you'll find. Ask, and you'll be answered. Seek and you'll find. And the last thing he says is, knock, and the door will be open to you. What door is he talking about? Knock and the door. The door to what? The door to paradise. The door to salvation. The door to living with God forever and ever and ever. That's the door he's talking about. So constantly remind yourself when you have your prayers, first of all, shameless audacity when you go to God. Well, God, you know, I'm asking God for this. I, this person has, this cur- person has uh, cancer. And the doctors have said there's only a matter of time. So what are you supposed to do? Stop praying for that person to be healed? No. God can do anything, we said. So that's the way we direct our prayers. But, all right, so ask, seek, and knock. And do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God our Father in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, making intercession for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. Father, your servants Abraham and Paul knew the cost of obedience to your will. Thank you for their witness. Thank you for their steadfast faith. Like them, keep us faithful, true, and bold, always glorifying your holy name and building up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. 
purify the testimony of your church so that it never wavers in the face of persecution. Keep it persistent in prayer and gracious in service. Let it never depart from the faith once delivered to the saints. Make it beautiful with holiness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the persecuted church, for all who face martyrdom at the hands of those who despise the name of Jesus, and for missionaries who bravely preach the gospel to an unheeding world. Keep them steadfast in faith, fervent in hope, and constant in love for you and for all whom you long to save. Lord, in your mercy, draw the people of this congregation into a life of prayer with you. Help us to ask for your mercy, to seek your guidance, and to knock at the door of your heart. Give us the courage and love to invite family, friends, and neighbors into a closer walk with you. Lord, in your mercy, keep this country in your care. Guide our leaders in paths of righteousness. Help us to preserve and extend the blessings of liberty and justice for all. Give health and safety to all people and establish your kingdom among us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our enemies, for those who are estranged from us, for those who work to harm us, and for all whose hearts are full of bitterness, malice, perversion, and other evils. Transform them and conform them to your will. Help us to forgive them as you have forgiven us and heal our hearts so that we reflect the holiness and mercy of your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy, grant strength, comfort, and hope to everyone who needs your healing and loving presence. Especially we today for healing and strength for John Galeer, who was recovering after a brain procedure but is now back in the hospital again. Continued prayers of strength and healing for Paul Darnell in rehab facility. Continued prayers of healing and strength for Colin, Doug, Kim, TJ, Nancy, Jen, Tom, Sandy, Samantha, Mary Lou, Paul, and Robin, all being treated for cancer. Prayers for the Lord's blessings over Alex, Chris, Devin, Mark, Lisa, Linda, Kathy, Shirley, Diane, Glenn, Marion, Danny, Audrey, Rick, Linda, Ken, Nicole, Laura, and Tony. Thank you for all who care for them in their time of need. Bless them with patience and kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Father, keep in your care all who died clinging to the promise which, you ha which have their yes in Christ. Comfort those who mourn. Help us to readily give and humbly ask for forgiveness. Strengthen us when we are tempted to turn aside from your goodwill and deliver us from the snares of the evil one. Bring us to the kingdom that you have prepared for all whom you have redeemed through the merits of your dear Son, so that in the power of the Holy Spirit we may praise, adore, and bless you forever. Lord, in your mercy, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your hands, gracious Father, for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we have two announcements. Uh, Vacation Bible sco School's uh, deadline has been extended till 726. And um, the, the actual VBS will take place on July 30th. And uh, there's still room in there for a couple more kids. So uh, it's going to start July 30th, which is a Saturday at 1130. And uh, you can drop off the, the, the children and stay for a light lunch and depart. And, and uh, come back and pick them up at 5 o'clock. 
Also on uh, Thursday, July 8th, uh, 28th, there'll be the movie here at the church. Uh, the starting time is at 8 p.m. There'll be uh, snacks available, and the admission to the movie is free. It'll be outside, uh, weather permitting, and uh, just bring a chair or a blanket and enjoy the movie. We worship the Lord with our offering. Please rise for the offertory. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us first confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have had done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon the new path of life and build your kingdom here through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, we live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give thanks it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exults in boundless joy. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We recall the words spoken by the pastor when these elements were consecrated during the service of Holy Communion at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We sing the Agnes Day.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh Lord, 
my car When I and all someone there Consider all the world thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee How great thou art, how great thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee How great thou art I'm there proclaiming my God. 